joke, folks. College basketball season is almost over. We have March Madness, and that is the time of the year where 68 basketball teams compete for college basketball's biggest prize. Now, even if you're not a fan, there are often many things that you can learn from March Madness. And here are four things you can actually learn from March Madness that can help you become a better investor as well as have a, a more successful or better chance of a successful retirement. Number one is to have a plan. Now, crazy as it may sound, and I often say it a lot, so it might sound like a broken record, this is always still your best option for success. If you plan uh, allows time uh, to be consumed with activities such as market timing, um, speculating and gambling, uh, and worrying about crania or worrying about Obamacare, then I'm pretty sure that your retirement is not going to reach its full potential. When you plan, you demonstrate your intention, you demonstrate commitment, confidence, and you actually increase your likelihood of success. Number two is you need to assemble the right team and you need to get out of their way. Now, if you're watching March Madness, you might have many guesses of which team will win this year. However, I can assure you that it's not going to be the team with a tyrannical micromanaging coach or even player. Winning is dependent on how well-rounded your team is. Once you put together a quality team, you got to make sure that you get out of the way. Now, that doesn't mean that you ignore everything and you're not involved. It just merely means that you control your emotions, you control your behavior, and you provide support as well as accountability to your team. Now, number three is you got to pay attention to the details. I often have read and often hear stories of coaches, uh, sport team coaches, having a whole practice session on just basically how to put on your socks. Now, stupid as it might sound, it's those small details that actually will ruin your plan, your portfolio, and your retirement. Small details to me are things such as taxes, beneficiary designations, your wills and your trust, planning for long-term care, health care, medical expenses, even some of the larger expenditures that you might have during your retirement. So you need to think of the small details that you're ignoring, and then you need to go fix them. Number four, and lastly, is to make your timeouts productive. Do you carve out time during the year to pause and kind of reflect on what your goals are or desires are? Maybe those goals and desires have changed. Are you satisfied with your results? Not only investment results, obviously, but kind of where you are in retirement. Is it the retirement that you expected? Do you want to do more things or do you want to do less things? Or what are your intentions? This is the time of the year where you sit down with your advisor and go over these things. And at, at the same time, it gives you an opportunity to realign your priorities, possibly realign your portfolio and make sure that either you're still going in the right direction or making sure that we change directions to the direction that you feel you want to go into next. So many teams miss the window to qualify for the chance of the championship. Now, those teams basically just have to wait again till next year, and hopefully they'll be back. But you don't have to wait. You can start improving yourself right now. See you next time on Financial QB TV. Don't forget to get our book, Dirty Filthy Lies My Broker Taught Me, and 101 Truths About Money and Investing, which you can get by linking right here. And I'll see you next time on Financial QB TV.